Good morning, students. Our lecture today is the third part of odontogenic infection. In this lecture, we will deal with the management of inf uh, of odontogenic infection. In this lecture, we will discuss the principles of management of odontogenic infections. When the patient comes to our clinic complaining of an infection, we, uh, there is a series of principles that uh, the dentist should follow uh, to meet the standard care. Even though the expected results may have uh, may not always be achieved. Starting with the diagnosis, then we put a plan for the treatment, then the actual treatment. After the treatment, I will mon monitor the patient for any uh, signs of healing or uh, the opposite signs of, signs of recurrent infection. And then the final stage, we will reach to the healing of the infection. The first principle in the management of odontogenic infection is determination of the severity of infection. بمعنى الكيس شيت إذا تذكروها. أول شيء ال determination راح ينقسم لي شو راح أحدد the severity مال infection عن طريق the complete history أو عن طريق the physical examination. The complete history اللي هي الكيس شيت. أو شي راح أسأل البيشنت ال chief complaint مالتك شنو اللي جابك للعيادة شنو ممكن ال causes اللي تخلي البيشنت with the infection come to the clinic شو راح يقول لك أنا سني دا يوجعني I have a toothache أو أنا ممكن يقول لك فتش مورم I have a swollen jaw ممكن يقول لك عندي حباية بحلقي I have a gum boil in my, in my mouth ممكن يقول لك أنا أحس طعم جراحة بحلقي uh, there is a drainage of pus in the patient's mouth. كلها اكتبها من patient's own words. شرح اجي عليها رح اخذ وراها ال history of a present illness. ال history يتقسم الى عدة اجزاء ونبدي بش وقت. How long the infection has been present? اول سؤال اسأله لازم اعرف ال onset. ايش قد ايش وقت بدا عندك هذا الالم او ايش وقت كنت بدا عندك هذا السوالنج يوم يومين اسبوع اسبوعين هاي كل شغله مهمه شنو بعد اساله ثاني سؤال استهدف اعرف الكورس اوف انفكشن شلون ده تمشي ده تمشي عندي الانفكشن هاف ذا سيمتومز اوف انفكشن بين كونستانت يعني الم نفسه هو نفس الالم او السوالنج هو نفس السوالنج or the condition is steadily uh, grown worse since the, since the symptoms were first noted ممكن يقول لك كان عندي الم بسيط وبعدين زاد او ممكن يقول لك هو الم نفس الالم صار له 3 ايام زين الفاينل انكويري او اخر سؤال اساله استهدف اعرف الرابيديتي اوف بروجريشن هاي ال 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 infection ده تمشي بسرعة اه بسرعة كبيرة أو لا شرح أسأله أنه has the infection process progressed rapidly over a few hours or gradually increased in the severity for several days or weeks يعني مثلا يجيك patient يقول لك أنا البارحة فتشي ورم أو patient يقول لك أنا والله صار لي أسبوع الورم بدأ خفيف خفيف وهسه صار بحيث كبر حجمه يلا اجا اجاك للعياده بعد ايش راح اسال البيشنت بالكومبليت هيستوري ليستنج انفورميشن اباوت ذا بيشنت سيمتومز 
الانفكشن هي عبارة عن انفلاميشن والانفلاماتيف بروسيس عرفنا شنو هي الساين اند سيمتومز مالتها اول شي واللي هو الموست كومن اللي هو البين اللي هو اكثر شي راح يجيب البيشنت للدنتست ايش راح اساله وين بدا عندك الالم وتقدر توصف لي المنطقة اللي ينتشر بيها الالم كلش مهمة هاي الشغلة بعد ايش ثاني صفة عندي بال بالانفكشن او بالانفلاميشن اللي هو سوالينج اسال البيشنت اقول له اوصف لي اي مكان اوف سوالينج او اشر لي على المكان اللي بي سوالينج مرات انت ما تحس بالسوالينج او ما تنتبه له مباشره بس البيشنت من راح ياشر لك عليه راح تنتبه بعد شو اسال البيشنت اساله اباوت ذا وورث اوف ذا اوف ذا اريا تسأل الاريا تحسها حارة من تلزمها واحدة من علامات الانفكشن انه الاريا فيل وورمث تو تاتش بعدش عندي اني تشينج ان كلر بالاريا ريدنس اريثيميا انديكيتس وي هاف ان انفكشن اسأل سؤال كلش مهم اللي هو دو يو هاف ديفيكولتي ان اوبننج ذا ماوث وايدلي اني ديفيكولتي ان تشوينج سوالوينج اور بريذينج كلها هاي مشاكل تنطيني انطباع عن السيفيريتي مال انفكشن اخر شي راح اساله على الجنرال هيلث البيشنت اشوفه فاتيج فافرش الجليزد ايز يتسمى هذا البيشنت ماليز يعني صحته تعبانه كلش معناها الانفكشن بدات تاخذ صيغه السيستميك ديزيز بعد ايش راح استفسر من البيشنت Another question is discussing the treatment. If the patient have any previous professional treatment or self-treatment, as the patient رايح طبيب قبل داخل emergency room على مود هذا ال ال chief complaint أو أنت ما أخذ antibiotic شنو أهمية أنه ما أخذ علاج لا لا حتى أعرف أكو استجابة للعلاج. كلش مهمة الاستجابة للعلاج إذا أكو استجابة معناها هذا شنو الانفكشن مو كلش سيفير وتتجاوب وياي لكن إذا رايح العدة أطباء وما فايدة العلاج معناها لازم أستخدم وياه أجرسيف تريتمت بعد شنو أسأل البيشنت كومبليت ميديكال هيستوري كل شيء إلى علاقة بالميديكال هيستوري مال البيشنت أنا لازم أسأله صحتك العامة شلونها تشكي من شيء تأخذ أدوية بصورة مستمرة ضغط سكر كلش مهم هاي الشغلات بالنسبة لنا رح نشرحها بالتفصيل بالبرنسبل القادم ليش مهم عندي أخذ تفاصيل الميديكال هيستوري لأنه تأثر لي على الإميونيتي تأثر لي على الريسبونس of the body to the infection After completing uh, the history uh, of the patient taking the history of the patient we will enter to the second part of our uh, examination which is the physical examination First of all, I will obtain the patient vital signs. Why, the, why are the vital signs important? Because they are um, greatly affected by the infection. The first, um, the most uh, vital sign affected by the infection is the temperature. If I measure the temperature and it is above 38 uh, Celsius, it means I have a severe infection, a systemic uh, manifestation of the infection. Also, the pulse rate. With the increase of the temperature, there will be an increase in the pulse rate. If I uh, check the pulse rate and it is above 100 speed per minute, it means I have uh, a serious and uh, severe infection. The least vital sign affected by the uh, uh, by the infection, it is the blood pressure, but it is important where in patients complaining from hypertension. Patient with hypertension, when I uh, measure their blood pressure, I see uh, it's more elevated than usual due to the significant pain and anxiety. Sometimes when I uh, do the uh, blood pressure measurement, I see hypotension. Uh, decrease in the blood pressure why due to septic shock this is also indication of a serious infection the respiratory, uh, respiratory rate it is an important value to measure in case of an odontogenic infection why because most uh, of the 
odontogenic infection cause constriction of the upper airway so so you see the patient taking short breath short heavy breaths and uh, quick breath uh, breaths so, so that he can respirate take an air uh, if the uh, respiration rate is greater than 18 breaths per minute this is a sign that uh, the infection we are involving is severe the first part of, of the physical examination is inspection of patient's general appearance uh, the patient who have more than a minor localized infection have the appearance of fatigue, feverishness, malaise. We called it a toxic appearance. The patient is very tired. This is the fact that he has a severe infection. The patient head and neck should be carefully examined for the cardinal signs of infection as we discussed earlier. Uh, inspection for uh, any evidence of swelling and overlying erythemia. We ask the patient to open his mouth, swallow, take deep breaths. If we uh, detect any trismus, dysphagia, which is in uh, difficulty in swallowing, or dyspnea, difficulty in breathing, these are ominous signs indicating severe infection. The patient should refer immediately to a maxillofacial surgeon. The other part of physical examination is uh, palpation of any area of swelling. The palpation is done by, by digital uh, palpation. Uh, like here, in this case, we are examining the floor of the mouth for any involvement of the submental or sublingual space. I put two fingers below. Uh, the floor of the mouth to support the swelling and with the ending index finger I am doing the palpation gentle palpation here also we are examining the submandibular area two fingers supporting the floor of the mouth and one finger is uh, doing the palpation uh, what, what do I check with palpation I check for tenderness uh, I check the amount of local warmth or heat and the consistency of a swelling. Consistency of a swelling is important to determine in which stage of infection we are. If I have edematous swelling, jelly-like, doughy-like feeling, which means we are still in the inoculation stage. If the swelling is more firm or board-like, indurated, يعني كأنما مثل الخشبة. We are in the cellulitis stage. If I feel a central fluctuance when I do the palpation, we, uh, this means we are uh, we entered the abscess stage. Other part of physical examination is the intraoral examination. I do the intraoral examination to find the specific cause of infection. It could be a severely carious tooth or an obvious periodontal abscess or severe periodontal disease or combination between caries and periodontal disease any uh, cause uh, any uh, suspected uh, tooth suspected periodontal problem uh, sometimes a fracture of the tooth fracture of the jaw of the patient uh, has recently uh, been in an accident or in a fight or are suspects in the odontogenic infection like we see here we see an obvious vestibular swelling caused by this third molar also here we see obvious vestibular swelling and we see here a sinus for the drainage of the abscess the final aspect of the physical examination is taking an uh, x-ray to, to confirm the suspected teeth, uh, uh, tooth if I have more than one badly carious tooth I want to determine which one that caused the problem I will uh, refer to the uh, radiographic examination uh, usually we take periapical x-ray but if the patient have severe trismus we may uh, change it uh, to periapical uh, sorry, we may change it to taking him uh, for a panoramic 
excellent. After we ended the physical examination, you will sh uh, the dentist will have uh, a sense of which stage the infection is right now. How can I differentiate, as I say, from the duration, pain, size, peripheral definition, consistency on palpation, presence of perilence, pus, and potential danger? So, in comparison, in the inoculation stage, the duration of pain will be acute, which means from 0 to 3 days, and the pain is mild. In the cellulitis stage, the duration also acute from 1 to 5 days, but the pain is severe. So, the distinction between the inoculation stage and cellulitis stage is the pain. In the abscess stage, we enter here uh, to a more chronic form of the infection. Uh, the pain is well localized and mild. When comparing the size, the size of cellulitis is usually larger than the edema and the abscess. As, uh, as I said, the abscess is well confined. So, in comparing the large, the cellulitis is larger than the abscess and the edema. The edema, when will we see it? In the inoculation stage. So, regarding the periphery, the cellulitis usually have diffused borders, as well in the inoculation stage or the edema. There is no defined border of the cellulitis or edema, but when we reach the abscess stage, there is a defined border. So this is one uh, another uh, uh, another benefit of the uh, palpation. I see the borders. Is it diffused? Uh, there is no distinct borders between the normal tissue and the infected tissue, or it is well defined. I when I palpate the abscess. I can feel a hard definition, hard tissue around the abscess. I can uh, differentiate between the infected tissue and the normal soft tissue around it. The important landmark that I can judge by it with, in which stage the infection is, is the consistency to palpation. Jelly-like, mildly tender, to palpation, edematous swelling, we are here in the inoculation stage, the first stage of the infection. While in a durated or board like, يعني مثل الخشب, أدوس المنطقة كلش firm, كلش قوية, painful, بال, بال, during palpation, patient has pain, we are here in the cellulitis stage. If I do palpation and feel a central fluctuance, as I said, كأن ما نفخ بها جوا بطنها مليانة مي, معناها we are in the abscess stage. هنا نعدنا severity of cellulitis increased as its firmness. Fairness in increased. كل ما أشوفها more firm معناها cellulitis more severe عندي. أكو شغلة عندنا اللي هو the presence of pus مثل ما قلنا. تحدد لي severity مال infection. ما من when there is a pus it means that the body has locally walled off the infection and the local host resistance mechanisms are bringing the infection under control يعني الجسم مسيطر على الوضع اي بدا يحارب حصر الانفكشن بهذا المكان In many clinical situations, distinction between severe cellulitis and abscess may be difficult, especially if the abscess lies deeply within the soft tissue. In deep, deep facial spaces, it is so difficult to differentiate between cellulitis and abscess. In some patients, 
and indurated cellulitis may have areas of abscess within it يعني احنا عندنا اذا large cellulitis مرات اكو مناطق راح يبدي بيها يصير liquefaction ويصير عندي abscess formation يعني بنفس ال swelling بنفس ال infection راح تشوف areas بيها cellulitis و areas بيها abscess soft tissue in inoculation stage نجي لمرحلة ال treatment إذا بعدنا مرحلة ال inoculation stage مجرد removal of the odontogenic cause يعني إذا عندي tooth ممكن أسوي له endo إذا salvageable إذا non-restorable ممكن أسوي له extraction with or without antibiotic ما أحتاج ال antibiotic إذا كان عندي بعدنا مرحلة ال edema مرحلة ال mild pain مرحلة ال inoculation مرحلة السلوليتس بالإضافة إلى removal of dental cause شرح أحتاج راح أحتاج أسوي incision and drainage هسا تقول زين إحنا سلوليتس وما عدنا باس ليش نسوي incision and drainage هسا أنا قلت السبب أنه مرات عدنا large areas of سلوليتس أكو بيها areas of باس formation أريد أسوي drainage أنا لهذا الباس وبعد شو أسوي أنطي أنتيبايوتيك للبيشنت من أني بمرحلة السليولايتس الأنتيبايوتيك ويا السيرجيكال تريتمنت كلش 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 ضرورية ورح نحكي بالبرنسبلز البقية على هاي النقطة بالأبسز ستيج نفس الشي هم من يرموفل أوف ذا دينتال كوز ويا انسجن اند درينج طبيعي مدام عندي أبسز لازم أسوي انسجن اند درينج بالإضافة إلى أنطي أنتيبايوتيك للبيشنت This is principle number one Determine the severity of infection As I said Why I should determine the severity To know if I can Deal with it by my own As a general dentist Or refer it to an oral And maxillofacial specialist So he can deal with it With his experience The second principle is to evaluate the state of the patient's host defense mechanism. يعني شنو ال patient صحته شلونها ال immunity مالته شلونها يقدر يحارب هاي ال infection لا محاربة ال infection تسعين بالمية تقع على ال immunity مال patient. يعني ممكن أنت تسوي له surgical drainage وتنطي له antibiotic لكن إذا ال immunity مالته كلش ضعيفة راح تطول عندك ال infection وممكن ترجع عندك مرة أخرى فلذلك كلش مهم أنه أعرف شنو هي الصحة العامة مال patient أو الصحة العامة مال الجهاز المناعي لل patient ال immunity مال patient شلونها أكو هواية عندنا <hesitation> diseases و drugs تأثر لي على ال immunity، ال immunocompromised دائما يكونون معرضين لل infection، هاي ال infection تصير more serious rapidly، ليش هماني فائدة أخرى إنه أعرف هذا immunocompromised لو لا؟ لأنه ال progression مال infection راح يصير كلش مختلف عن ال <hesitation> normal patient اللي كلش راح يصير سريع عندي، راح تشوف اليوم إجاك إدميتاس ثاني يوم تلقى إجاك بص. و أصلا فاتح درينج كلش تطور سريع و swelling كلش قوي يصير عنده so to manage their infection more effectively it is important to be able to identify those immunocompromised patients and how to deal with them what are the medical conditions that can cause compromisation of host defense first uncontrolled metabolic diseases like what Like poorly controlled controlled diabetes or alcoholism with ma or malnutrition patients or end stage renal diseases, these cases, these patients, uh, these diseases will cause decrease in the function of leukocytes, including decreased chemotaxis, phagocytosis, and bacterial killing. From these diseases, what are the most common? It is the diabetes. The type 1 and type 2 diabetes are the, uh, the, uh, the most common immunocompromising diseases. 
and worsening control of hyperglycemia correlate directly with lower resistance to all type of infections which mean uncontrolled diabetes patients have poor response or lower resistance to the infection ولذلك انتم منتجون للعياده يجينا البيشنت يريد يقلع سنه حتى لو هو كان ما عنده اكتف انفكشن لكن من نشوف السكر مالته عالي شلون تريد تقلع له هو uncontrolled لما السكر مالته عالي معناه عنده hyperglycemia hyperglycemia معناها اذا قلعت ودخلت دخل باثوجين واحد بالسوكت معناها صار عندك انفكشن وراح تصير كلش صعب السيطرة على هذا الانفكشن لان هو اصلا البيشنت مالتك اون كونترول فهاي شغلة كلش مهمة بالاكستراكشن بيشنت حتى ما يصير عندك كومبليكيشن انه لازم يكون كونترول كونترول بمعنى مشخص ديابيتس ياخذ علاجه ومسيطر على الاكل مالته ومن تقيسه يطلع ضمن الحدود المقبولة زين Another condition that compromises the host defense is the immune system suppressing diseases like a human immunodeficiency virus or acquired immunodeficiency uh, syndrome AIDS lymphomas, leukemias, other malignancies uh, congenital and acquired immunologic diseases All these diseases are directly affecting the immune system. Uh, causing decrease in the white cell functions and decrease in the antibody uh, synthesis and production. So their response to the infection will be so low. And they, are, uh, they have high susceptibility for uh, severe infection. Another condition it is uh, patients taking immunosuppressive drugs like uh, in cancer chemotherapies and organ transplant patients, uh, patients taking corticosteroids. All these uh, medications uh, have a direct effect on the immunity because that is its job. They are called immunosuppressive therapy. They are their job is to suppress the immunity. So in patients taking these therapies, uh, you will see a decreased function of T and B lymphocyte and immunoglobulin. Patients taking these medications are more likely to have severe infection. Sometimes uh, the immunosuppressive uh, uh, effect of the cancer chemotherapy can last even after a year after ending the therapy. So when you, uh, so in return to the history, when you ask the patient about his general health, واحد من الأسئلة نقول لنا هي مستشفى قبل ليش هي مستشفى قبل لأنه الكيموثيرابي or even excision of the malignant يحتاج أنه يدخل مستشفى من حيقول لك مثلا والله نمت مستشفى جد تأخذ كيمياوي هذا شنو يخلي عندك علامة استفهام شقد صار له شنو الورم اللي كان عندك شقد صار من قطعة العلاج شقد استمرت على العلاج كلها هاي شغلات لازم نستفسر عليها لذلك دائما 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 من تسأل على الميديكال هيلث لا تغفل عن أي نقطة كل نقطة بالميديكال هيلث مال بيشنت ممكن تأثر بشكل كلش كلش كبير على البلان اللي تريد تحطها لعلاج البيشنت The third principle is determining the setting of care. What does this mean? This means, is this infection uh, can be managed by a general dentist or I should refer this patient to a specialist, a specialist especially a maxillofacial surgeon. Most odontogenic infections seen by the dentist can be managed Uh, by general dentist with the expectations of a rapid resolution. Uh, they are uh, treated with minor surgical procedure and antibiotic if indicated. However, 
Some odontogenic infections uh, have the potential of causing a life-threatening situations and require more aggressive medical and surgical management, like we discussed in the previous lecture, like Ludwig's angina or cavernous sinus thrombosis. In these special situations, early recognition of the severity and early referral of the, to the specialist will uh, cause a great difference in the management of these uh, conditions. The specialist, the maxillofacial specialist, with the best th training and experience in the management of severe infection, can optimize the outcomes and minimize the complications of these infections. What are the criteria for referral to a hospital or uh, to a maxillofacial surgeon? There are certain criteria that I should follow. Certain uh, symptoms, when I see them, I say, no, this is beyond my reach. As a general dentist, I must refer it to, refer it to a specialist. <coughs> Sorry. First of all, is a history of a rapid uh, progression of infection. Infection that is rapidly progressing through uh, one to two days with a large swelling and pain is a greatly alarming sign and uh, this patient need to be uh, immediately hospitalized. Difficulty in the breathing or dyspnea. Patient who having any difficulty in the breathing, uh, this means uh, that the infection are causing compression on the soft tissue of the upper uh, airway so that the patient is unable to maintain a patent Airway. In this situation, the patient should uh, immediately refer to the hospital to secure his airway and make uh, and uh, maintain an intact airway. Another ominous sign it is the difficulty in swallowing. Yeah, sorry, in swallowing or dysphagia. Uh, in patient with acutely progressive deep facial space infection may have a difficulty in swallowing their saliva. I see the patient come drooling, he have inability to swallow the saliva. This is a bad sign, meaning the patient is unable to swallow his saliva. The patient should be transported to the emergency room. He may require an intubation for airway maintenance and then uh, for definite treatment. These first three uh, cases a rapidly progressing infection and difficulty in breathing, difficulty in swallowing in any patient. If I see them in any patient with odontogenic infection, I should immediately refer them to the hospital emergency room. Other signs and symptoms uh, that uh, indicate the referral of the cases to an oral and maxillofacial uh, uh, specialist is moderate to severe trismus. When I uh, measure the interincisal area, if it is less than 20 millimeter, it means I have uh, between 20 and 10 millimeters mean I have a moderate trismus. Below 10 uh, millimeter, it mean, it mean I have a severe trismus. In these cases, I should refer the patient uh, to a maxillofacial specialist. If I have uh, an extra oral swelling or a swelling extending beyond the alveolar process, this may need uh, extra oral uh, incision for the incision and the drainage, so I should refer him to a maxillofacial specialist. If the temperature is elevated beyond 38 centigrade, this is uh, a bad sign. Uh, if I have systemic involvement, the patient have a severe malaise, he look toxic with glazed eyes, open mouth, dehydrated, sick appearance, all these uh, uh, signs of severe infection, systemic involvement of severe infection uh, are indicated for oral and maxillofacial surgeon. Compromised host defense, any patient have a problem 
with the immunity as we discussed in the principle 2 should be referred to a oral and maxillofacial surgeon. Also, in patients needing general anesthesia for incision and drainage or patient with a previous, a previous failed treatment or patient having dehydration, severe dehydration, all these cases, the patient should be referred to a maxillo a facial oral and maxillofacial specialist. It is not wrong uh, to refer the patient to um, another specialist. You are the general dentist. You are not completely qualified for the treatment of these cases. While the specialist, he have the experience and he will be able to save uh, the life of the patient, especially in the first three, uh, three situations. In summary, for the, principle, for the first three principles that we discussed uh, earlier, within the few minutes of the initial patient encounter, these three principles will allow the dentist to, uh, to assess the severity, evaluate the host defense, and decide for the best setting care uh, of the patient. In doubtful situations, the Manisir index check, it is always best to take the side of infection, uh, sorry, to take the side of caution and refer the patient for a higher level of care. A proper decision making at this stage, قرارك بهاللحظة, can prevent serious morbidity and occasional mortality that is still occur because of odontogenic infection. مثل ما لاحظنا odontogenic infection it is uh, شغلة مو سهلة ولا هينة ممكن تأثر لي على the airway مال patient اللي هي أخطر حالة فلما يصير عندك شك تحس نفسك مو قادر على أنه توفر العلاج المناسب لهذا patient أبد أبد مو غلط أنه تحوله إلى specialist. Now we will enter to the core of the management of odontogenic infection. Principle 4. Treat infection surgically. The primary principle of management of odontogenic infections are to remove the cause of the infection, which is the most important thing. If you would leave the source or the cause of infection, there will be no resolution of the infection. And second is to provide a drainage of the accumulated pus and necrotic debris. Main range from simple endodontic treatment to a complex extraoral incision and the drainage. So what are the surgical options that we have? First, we have endodontic treatment, simple endodontic treatment with pulp extirpation. Uh, sometimes this uh, uh, this endodontic treatment, the first visit we leave uh, the tooth open so that the pus can exit from the pulp uh, canal. We do uh, this uh, uh, treatment, endodontic treatment, if the tooth is salvageable, uh, can be restored, and if this infection is uh, small. If not, if the tooth is not restorable, we will refer to extraction, complete extraction of the tooth. Extraction will provide removal of the cause as well as an uh, opening for, uh, or let's we say, uh, aside for the drainage of uh, of pus, aside of the drainage of pus through the extraction socket. After we extract a tooth that uh, we confirm uh, have a periapical infection or periapical lesion, we must do irrigation with normal saline to clean the socket and the, uh, the cavity of the periapical lesion from the pus, from the accumulated pus. The third line of surgical management is incision and drainage. When we do incision and drainage, if the infection spread beyond the periapical region and enter to the facial and neck spaces. What are the advantages of incision and the drainage? First, uh, removal of the accumulated pus and bacteria. 
which dramatically decrease the load of bacteria and necrotic debris. This will allow the host defense to take uh, charge and eliminate the remaining bacteria. Second advantage of incision and drainage is reduction of the hydrostatic pressure in the lesion. The accumulation of the pus will cause a hydrostatic pressure uh, in the region on, and, and uh, on the tissue around the infection. When we do incision and uh, drainage, there will be a drastic reduction in the hydrostatic pressure, which will improve the local blood supply and increase the delivery of host defenses and antibiotic to the infected area. When we decide uh, we will do incision and drainage, we, 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 will, uh, we will have the need to take a culture and uh, send it to the laboratory for antibiotic sensitivity testing. When I decide to do this, there are some indications. First, if the infection spread beyond the alveolar process, which means the infection uh, cross to the facial spaces and neck spaces. As we said, when the infection uh, spread uh, beyond the alveolar process, this indicate of a severe infection. Second, rapid progressive infection. Rapidly progressing infection, uh, in another indication of the severity of infection. Delay in bacterial identification in these cases may uh, be may have a disastrous consequences, and therefore culturing early in the clinical course is indicated in these cases. Uh, previous multiple antibiotic therapy, the patient came and uh, told you that he take many different types of antibiotic, but nothing work. At this time, you should take a culture and send it to antibiotic sensitivity test to determine which antibiotic uh, will control this infection. Non-responsive infection. Uh, after more than 48 hours and there is no response to the surgical treatment or to the antibiotic, we will need to take a culture for antibiotic testing. Recurrent infection. When the, infec when the initial infectious problem has resolved, an infection-free period between two, to two, uh, two days to two weeks followed, then a second infection will occur. There is a high probability that the infection caused by bacteria that are resistant to the previously used antibiotic. Finally, a compromised host defense. Patients with uh, compromised uh, immune system have uh, the propensity to harbor unusual pathogens. Uh, this, sh this uh, should be identified by culture and sensitivity testing. How will we do the specimen collection for uh, culture and sensitivity testing? From the maximum site of the swelling, whether it is intraorally or extraorally, first of all, I will disinfect the area. If it's if the swelling is intraorally, I will uh, make the patient wash his mouth with the chlorhexidine. If the uh, if the site is uh, if the site of the maximum swelling is extraorally, I will disinfect uh, the the skin with betadine. Uh, and, uh, and dry the area with the a sterile gauze. Then I will take a large gauge needle, usually 18 gauge, for uh, is uh, used for specimen collection. We will take a small syringe, about three to five millims. We not we don't need uh, any more than this. Insert then the in, uh, the needle is inserted in the abscess or even the cellulitis area as we see here inserted in the maximum swelling of the area and I start to draw the liquid it will be uh, 
Sometimes it will appear as a solid pus. Sometimes it will be mixed with the blood. As we see, this the color of this blood is uh, not the usual color, and it's clearly mixed with the pus. About one to two millimeter of pus or tissue fluid is aspirated. Then I remove the needle, cap the cover, and immediately send it to the laboratory. And uh, I ask, I request for him from him uh, to do culture and sensitivity test. With this test, uh, I will ask for the cram stain. The, the aerobic and anaerobic cultures and antibiotic sensitive testing so when I take a specimen not only uh, ask for uh, antibiotic uh, sensitivity testing no I will uh, benefit from this uh, specimen by uh, knowing the gram positive or uh, uh, sorry the gram stain of the bacteria whether it is aerobic or anaerobic in addition to the type of antibiotic that will be most effective for this now we will enter to the surgical part of the treatment of odontogenic infection it is the incision and the drainage how will I perform incision and the drainage first of all as I say we will choose the maximum area of a swelling whether it is intraorally or extraorally, avoiding uh, incising across the frenum or the path of mental nerve in the uh, mandibular in the lower mandibular region. Once the area of incision has been selected. I will give the patient a proper type of anesthesia, preferably a block anesthesia. Why? As we know, we have local infection in the area. If I use infiltration, it will be not sufficient. The patient will not take enough uh, anesthesia so that I can perform the incision and drainage pain, uh, painless as possible. So, when, uh, when applicable, I will do a block anesthesia, whether it is in the mandible or in the maxilla. If I want to use infiltration, I will do multiple injections around the, infection, the infected area, taking care not use the same needle from the infected area and uh, reinserted it into non-infected area. If I use the needle and give injection into an area of infection, I should, after withdrawal, change the needle and re-inject the anesthesia with the clean needle to another area so that the infection will not spread uh, from infected area to non-infected area through dental needle at this point when we reach to the anesthesia I, uh, I will take the culture and sensitivity test we will return to the steps discussed before if I need we will take culture and sensitivity if I don't need I will proceed what will I do next I will use blade number 11 and make an incision through the mucosa and submucosa this is the incision the incision should be short and usually no more than no more than one centimeter then I will insert a hemostat first I will insert the hemostat closed and enter it and open it inside the cavity and um, take the hemostat out while it's open Never ever ever close the hemostat inside the tissue because you may uh, injure an nerve, injure artery, or may uh, 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 injure any soft tissue inside the cavity you are not realizing. So I 
uh, insert the hemostat closed open the hemostat then take the hemostat open while it is open out of them of the socket why I do this the hemostat will open several uh, we will open it in several directions to break up any small loculation any cavities of pus that have not been uh, opened by the initial incision as we said sometimes this, uh, the abscess or the cellulitis have multiple foci of pus so when I do this break up I will break any loculation any cavities of the pus so that I open all the cavities for the drainage any pus or tissue fluid that drain uh, drain out during this time should aspirate it with a suction استعمل السكر اسوي aspiration للبس ما اخلي اي بس uh, enter to the patient mouth ما يبلع البيشنت اي بس المفروض انت محضر وياك سكر بهالحالة once all the area of the abscess cavity have been opened and all the pus has been removed I will insert a small drain the most common type of a drain uh, used in the, for intraoral abscesses is a quarter inch sterile penrose drain why I use the drain to keep the opening of the incision open so that the drainage will remain during the next days there will be no further accumulation of the pus if I don't have this tube I can substitute it with a small strip of a sterilized rubber dam or a surgical gloves material but take care that the patient doesn't have any latex sensitivity when I cut a piece of the drain of adequate length insert it to the cavity and reach to the depth I insert it with a hemostat to the depth of the abscess the drain then sutured to one edge of the incision with a non-resorbable suture. The suture should be placed in a viable tissue. I should not place it in a friable or dead tissue. So that uh, this, uh, the drain will uh, last as long as I need it. A small note here. Um, Sometimes we will see the pus will come beside the drain, not through the drain. Because this is out uh, against the gravity and uh, due to the thickness of the pus, it will not flow, it will not enter. It will be so difficult to enter uh, for the pus to enter through uh, the drain and uh, go outside the swelling so you'll see the drainage mostly come from beside the drain the main function of the drain is to keep the opening of the incision that we made open as long as I needed the drain should remain in a place until all the drainage has stopped and I ask the patient to come after one day two days three days and check for the progress of the incision and the drainage removal is done by simply cut simply cutting the suture and slimic, slipping the drain from the wound and the wound will heal normally there is no need for any suture as we discussed earlier any extra oral swelling need an extra oral incision and drainage performed by a specialist but you should know where are the sites of extra oral incisions this incision is used for the drainage of the temporal uh, spaces the deep and superficial temporal spaces this incision is used for the drainage of submental and submandibular uh, spaces this drainage C is uh, for the drainage of sub 
mandibular submasseteric and the pterygo mandibular. This incision D is used for the drainage of lateral pharyngeal and the upper part of retropharyngeal. This incision here is used for the uh, drainage of retropharyngeal space. This drainage here, uh, sorry, this incision here is used for the drainage of uh, parotid space infection. And this drainage, as we take uh, in the previous lecture, is used for the drainage of the infratemporal space. The fifth principle in treating autotogenic infections is support the patient medically. A patient's systematic resistance to infection is perhaps the most determinant of a good outcome. Host systemic resistance considered in three areas. First, immune system compromise. A specialist should, uh, should treat odontogenic infection that occur in patients with immunocompromised. As we said, any immunocompromised patient should be uh, referred to a specialist. Often hospi hospitalization and medical consultation are required. The treatment uh, team select therapies designed to enhance the immune response, combat the infection medically with bactericidal antibiotics and optimize the surgical management of infection. Second, control of systemic diseases. Many systemic diseases reduce the ability of the patient to, re uh, to resist infection and uh, to undergo treatment, such as diabetes. The control of a blood sugar directly correlated with the resistance to infection. Host response to a significant infection increases the blood sugar level and therefore the insulin requirement of a person with diabetes. Moreover, cardiovascular diseases decrease the ability of the host to respond to the stress of infection and surgery. Therefore, optimize, uh, optimizing control of hypertension, cardiac dysrhythmias, uh, dis and atherosclerotic heart diseases is an essential part of the comprehensive management of odontogenic infection. Medications may also affect the treatment of odontogenic infections. For example, patients receiving anticoagulant therapies may need reversal of the anticoagulation before the surgery can be self-removed. كالعادة, patient يأخذ aspirin, يأخذ أي anticoagulant medication. كأنما الانسجن عن ترينج مثل الإجزاء هم لازم نسيطر على البليدينج مع البيشنت فيزيولوجيك ريزيرفز شنو يعني هنا أنا بالفيزيولوجيك ريزيرفز Even patient without medically compromising disease may have reduced or altered physiologic reserves Like what? Like children for example They are particularly susceptible to dehydration and high fever. The children, مثل ما نقول مناعتهم بعدها ضعيفة ما متكونة كلش فرأسا نشوفهم يتمرضون بسرعة والمرض يمشي عندهم السيفيريتي كلش الرابيديتي والسيفيريتي مالته كلش عالية. بينما ال elderly patient أو ال patients الأكبر have a greater resistance to fever but are susceptible. Also, to dehydration. Dehydration, كل الشغلة صعبة عندنا هنا أنا بالinfection. مثل ما قلنا the patient عنده ترزمس, عنده dysphagia. ما يقدر يبلع, ما يقدر يأكل. راح يصير عنده dehydration. Dehydration هم مين إيش راح يسوي لي? حيقلل لي مناعة الجسم. راح يخلي the infection تتمكن من عنده. Therefore, careful control of highly elevated fever. Along with active hydration and nutritional support are important component of the management of odontogenic infection. What, uh, what are the instructions that we should give the patient after we do incision and the drainage and before we dismiss him? First, we should prescribe him a proper analgesic. To reduce the pain and make him uh, and reduce the trismus and make the patient able to eat and to drink again. 
then you should give the patient a careful post-operative uh, instructions راح تقول له هاي الجهة ما تاكل عليها تلتزم بالأدوية تلتزم بالعلاج انت راح تكتب له انتبايتك الانتبايتك لازم ياخذه بمواعيده وبجرعاته مو من يخف السوالنج يعوف الانتبايتك هاي شغلة كلش 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 مهمة البيشنت كومبلاينس بالنسبة للعلاج كلش تشدد عليها خلال الانستراكشن بعد ايش تنصح البيشنت من ضمن الانستراكشن اللي راح نعطيه اياه انه اه تقول له لازم يشرب ووتر هي ماست درينك ووتر درينك جوز سوفت سوفت دايت هاي كالوري سوفت دايت سو ذات هي كان كم باك هي كان كم باك ذا انفكشن بروبرلي اند سم تايمز وي نيد تو جيف ذا بيشنت ا نيوتريشنال سبلمنتس This is the end of lecture 3 section 1. Please proceed to lecture 3 section 2. Thank you.